Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a brief look at what a teaching philosophy statement is, some reasons to create one, and I'll also give an overview of the structure of a teaching philosophy statement. This video was created for instructors who work in a higher education environment. Let's first look at definitions and uses. The teaching philosophy is a written statement that communicates your beliefs about teaching and learning and includes evidence from your teaching to show how you translate these beliefs into practice. There's multiple uses to a teaching philosophy statement. They're often required when applying for academic positions. They're typically part of your teaching portfolio. They're usually also required in your tenure and promotion reviews. They are typically also part of teaching award applications, and you can also use your uh, teaching philosophy statement to communicate your approach to, to your students in a syllabus or a course website, and to reflect on why it is that you do what you do with respect to teaching. What about the structure of a teaching philosophy statement? It can be a standalone document, or it can be integrated, as I just mentioned, as part of a job application, a teaching portfolio or a teaching dossier, or a course website. Typically, the teaching philosophy statement is one to two pages, and it's written using a narrative kind of first person approach. So using I statements is what's expected. Um, please don't be nervous about using I, even if that's something you don't normally do in writing within your discipline. A strong teaching philosophy uh, does take into account your disciplinary context and it manages to avoid jargon and cliches both from your discipline and also more general jargon and cliches such as I'm passionate about teaching. Some people include references to the literature and I personally find that's a good idea because it shows that you take a scholarly approach to your, your teaching. Other things that might be included in the structure are headers and subheaders quotes, um, and sometimes images. Okay, let's recap. This is usually what your reader expects. They want to see that you articulate your beliefs about teaching and student learning, that you address how the beliefs show up in your teaching, that it's grounded in your disciplinary context. They typically don't want to read more than two pages, and they do expect you to write from your perspective using the I. Thanks so much for watching this video on the teaching philosophy statement. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.